I am honored and humbled to be with y'all uh, this morning. I should have drank some H2O before I got here this morning, but uh, we're going to be all right. Uh, thank you, uh, Pastor Matt, Pastor BJ. Uh, can we give the worship team a hand, uh, a hand of encouragement? Just uh, wow. Um, I am um, just thankful to be back with y'all uh, here once again. Uh, just so you know, um, I pray for y'all. Y'all are on my heart often, and uh, I ain't forgot about y'all. So, um, and um, it's just a humble, uh, humbling experience to be able to come and, and share God's word and what um, and His heart with y'all uh, this morning. Um, and so, before um, we dive into this, um, I kind of want to set the the foundation, uh, the the tone for um, for where we're going this morning. Um, if you look in uh, Mark chapter 6, I believe around verse 34, Jesus is coming down from, uh, from a mountain. Uh, he's coming and, and he sees this, this large, this, this vast crowd. And Mark goes on to say that he is moved with compassion. Now, when we look at that word compassion, that, that word compassion comes from a Latin word compati, which means to suffer with. And what, what the Lord is calling us to do, something that um, he, he is uh, equipping us as the church, as the body, we've got to be willing and learn how to come alongside of someone and walk life out with them. Are y'all following me this morning? We've, we've got to, we, as, as Pastor Matt has said, we, we've got to get out from, from uh, behind uh, the battle lines. We've got to be willing to step to the front, knowing that God goes before us and that he is with us. We got to, when, when, when we come, uh, when we go out into the world, uh, we, we should be moved with compassion. We should be moved with the heart of the Father. But we cannot understand what is on God's heart if we're not diving into it. And, and, and what, what is happening now is that people who, it, it, it's, it's, it's almost like a, a tactic, you know, that the enemy is, he, he's, he's attacking. He's, the, the devil's not playing games. He's never played games. And, 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 it's, and we've got to get to this point to where it, we are willing to do whatever it takes to, to take this time and spend with Jesus. Because all, all this has been about has been relationship with him. And it's the thing, it, it, God is, it, the whole point of God creating us was to glorify him, to reflect his image, to reflect his heart in the world. And one of the very things that the Lord tackles is it, it, the heart. He, he tackles the mind, the inner man. And the direction that we're going this morning is that because we, uh, God calls out this, this people called the Israelites. And, and he calls his people out and he gives them th this, this thing to, to, to love me with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. What is that dealing with? That's dealing with the heart. And what we're going to, sorry, I'm getting ahead of my notes here. I'm getting ahead, getting ahead, getting ahead. We, we have got to get to the point to where we're willing to let the Lord work on our heart. <laughs> Man, what time? <laughs> the altars are open. Come <laughs> Man, that's great. <laughs> that's great. Uh, can we have that playing in the background? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, so, so <laughs> but y'all... <is> <laughs> How do we recover from this? Okay. Um, so what the Lord tackles is the heart. And I, 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 well, I guess I'm stepping on some toes. I'm not the lightest guy in the world, so I do apologize. But um, guys, if y'all, if there is unforgiveness, that, that, is, that is, if there's unforgiveness, if there's someone that you need to forgive, you need to do it. Because that's, that's hindering you from stepping into the purpose and plan God has placed for you. That also leads to bitterness. Bitterness doesn't taste, taste well. It tastes like whatever. It's not good. It's, you know, it's like you need to, you need to get rid of that. If, there, if there's pride within you. We, we, we as a church have got to get back to the place where we're walking in humility. Meaning full dependence upon the Lord in every area of our lives. Are y'all following me this morning? 
We, we, we've got to allow the Lord to work on the inside of us because it's from the inside that, that, that produces what we are to do outside here. Does that make sense? It starts from the inside. So if the Lord has not truly taken place here, then, then, then uh, but doing all these good deeds, you know, feeding the, feeding the poor, clothing, all those things are good, but then your heart is not connected to the heartbeat of the Father. And so then, you, 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 then, then we'll, tack, we'll, we'll tackle this later on. Then you're stepping into this place of, of, of just uh, getting by by morals and legalism. And that's not what was intended. We were intended to walk and, 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 and to reflect the heart of the Father throughout all of the earth. That leads us to Romans <laughs> chapter 10. Um, but before we go to there, uh, let's back up to the end of chapter 9. So what we're going to cover here this morning is Romans chapter 9, verse 30, through uh, 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 chapter 10, verse 4. And then we'll, we'll go from there. What shall we say then, that Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness have attained it? That is, a righteousness that is by faith. But, what, but that Israel, who pursued a law that would lead to righteousness, did not succeed in reaching that law. Why? Because they did not pursue it by faith. But as it were based on works. They have stumbled over the stumbling stone. As it is written, behold, I am laying in Zion a, a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. And whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. Uh, chapter 10, verse 1. Brothers, my heart's desire and prayer to God for them is that they may be saved. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For being ignorant of the righteousness of God and seeking to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. So this is Paul writing to the Romans here, and there's a whole plethora of things that, um, that I could give for, for, for contest before the sake of time. Uh, it was, Paul is, is writing to the Romans, and he's encouraging uh, the church through a lot of things, and we're in the midst of a passage that scholars uh, say is, is very, uh, you get in the thick of it. Like, you ever been in quicksand, and then, you know, just trying to, okay, maybe not that, okay, all right, maybe I'm the only one. Okay, cool. Um, so it's, it's like we're, we're stepping into a, a deep well, and, you know, I hope you got your floaties and able to swim. Come on, somebody, because if, if you don't, man, God bless you. I'll call a lifeguard, you know. We'll, we'll, <laughs> all right, Holy Spirit, come on. So um, we're stepping into uh, uh, Paul, and, you know, he, he's getting deep. I'm talking about he is, you know, he's, he's in one place, and all of a sudden he's got, oh, this thought over here, and he's sliding over here, you know, expressing this thought, and then he, he's getting right back to it. And so what, what I want to, what, what the Lord emphasized here as, as I'm looking at this passage, we see in chapter 9, Paul shares that his anguish about Israel not believing that Jesus Christ is their Messiah. And then Paul goes on to say that, that simply, uh, uh, and as BJ stated, stated uh, an ethnic Israelite or descendant of Abraham doesn't mean that one is faithful to the covenant. So God has to strategically crafted the line of Abraham that would carry the promise that God made to him, which is now brought to fulfillment through those uh, through Jesus Christ. And that fulfillment comes through those who have placed their faith in Jesus. So what we see uh, is the case for the longest time, Israel and Gentiles both have rejected God's way. And if we take a look back in, in Exodus uh, at Moses, as he's on the mountain and carrying God himself, uh, receiving the Ten Commandments, then you have simultaneously down at the, the bottom of the mountain, the Israelites making a golden calf, which then provokes God's anger towards them. And then and, and even further, uh, at, uh, before all of this happened, you, you got Pharaoh and Moses tell him, hey, let my people go, and, and Pharaoh refusing. So when we get here to, to chapter 10, Paul shifts to the present state, and I, I, I find this a, a prophetic thing uh, still happening today, of Israel rejecting Jesus. They, they, they reject Jesus because they believe their salvation is based upon performance of keeping the law or the Torah. 
So all, all this time, they, they, they missed the point of what Jesus has done in the fact that now the covenant, and we'll, we'll go back here to Jeremiah in just a second to, to, to establish all this, that the covenant is now based on faith in Christ Jesus. So we go here to Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31 through 37. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. My covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, declares the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. And no longer shall each one teach his neighbor or at each his brother saying, know the Lord, for they all shall know me from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. So, Father, before we even continue. Lord, let this sink into our hearts, Lord, that, Lord, you have written your law on our hearts. Lord, that we, we no longer have to, 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 to take animals and, 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 and make those type of offerings or anything. But, Lord, simply, Lord, you have called us to place our trust, our faith in you. And from there, Lord, you carry us in the direction that we need to be. You shape us and mold us into who you have called us to be. So, Father, I pray, Lord, that Lord, you will open our ears, open our hearts, Lord, to, to receive your word, to, to receive, Lord, what you have for us today. In Jesus' name, amen. So God promises that, that all would know God because the law would no longer have to be written on tablets, but the law will be written on our hearts through Holy Spirit. By, uh, by those who have placed their faith in Christ Jesus. God literally says, as, as you read further uh, in uh, 35 through 37, that uh, if the world were to fall apart, now I, I, I almost feel the, the Lord just kind of saying this a little sarcastically. Yeah, if the world, yeah, if the world falls apart. But if, if the world were to fall apart, so would the covenant. But we know that Paul says that he holds all things together, meaning that God is undefeated, consistently faithful in the promises that he makes. So in connection to Romans, we see that God has brought about that promise through Jesus Christ. So why did Israel fail? Well, what happened? What was the cause? They, they, were, they were literally brought out of the land of Egypt, literally brought out of the land of slavery. For hundreds of years, they were crying out, Lord, save us. Lord, save us. Lord, bring us out of this mess. And then God comes, sends Moses, raises Moses up, and it leads them out of the land of, of, of Egypt. And what ends up happening? They become the same people that they left from. They did not consult the heart of the Father, thinking that they can do all these things on their own and think they're good. And missed the whole point of what they were supposed to be throughout the earth. They were to represent the heartbeat. They were to represent the love. They were to represent the compassion. But yet they turned into the, 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 the one enslaving people, oppressing people. It's a matter of the heart. This is, this is why the Jews miss it. They were circumcised on the outside, but were not circumcised in heart. And the point of the law was to reveal the condition of our hearts, to point us to the one who can clean our hearts. And we, we've mentioned this word of faith here, this word faith. And, and, and for some, we may not necessarily have a, a, a you know, uh, understanding what that looks like but in this context here in Romans 9 verse 30 we can look at it this way why did the Israelites fail on, on the calling that, that God placed on their life they did not have faith or place their trust in God and what we see faith is a determined trust a surety as, as preachers uh, you know I, I grew up hearing them saying it's a know that you know that you know anybody remember that come on somebody uh, no Baptist yeah okay we ain't gonna go that direction all right but it's a know that you know that you know. And the Israelites end up just going against the grain of what God had set for them because they thought they could earn their way to salvation, which leads us to 
uh, they, could, they could earn their way to salvation apart from God, which leads us to our first point. Our identity in Christ isn't by just completing a list of rules, but by trust or faith in the work that Christ has already done. We are who we are because of what Christ has done. The stumbling stone of offense that, that the Lord, uh, that, that, that Paul mentions here, is the Lord showing to us we can't work our way to heaven by our own merit and works. We end up stepping into what is called legalism. Legalism says, I don't need God to get to heaven. Legalism plays this, this, this almost of defiancy, of, uh, of this picture of defiancy uh, where we can get to heaven without God. Legalism says, I don't need God to change my heart, my mind, my soul, my will, my emotions, my spirit. All I have to do is X, Y, Z, and, 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 and I'm good. So while many people check off that list, they don't know that they're on the path to destruction. And this is, what, this is why Jesus was so upset when it came to the Pharisees. The Pharisees, the, the, the leaders of the, of the Jews, they were the ones to show the people uh, of Israel how to live with a heart, a life, laid down to God. They were the quote-unquote pastors who were supposed to lead the people and how to live a life with their hearts totally surrendered, totally trusting God. And yet they did not consult the heart of the father and how they were to carry themselves so Jesus comes down to show the world hey this is actually how I created you to live Jesus lived the life moved with compassion Jesus literally came being born of a virgin being dependent upon a mother and being raised learning learning how we do things to learn how to suffer with us is this all making sense now We weren't meant to rely just, just on our, our works, but it's because we have trusted in the finished work of Christ that we live, that we move, and that we have our being. The law was only supposed to help us love God with everything. The Ten Commandments, not just halfway doing stuff, but, but letting the idols of our heart burn away to allow God to have our whole heart, our whole lives, so that in turn that we will show that burning love of God to others that he has for us. The point of this was to show us the urgency of why we should be the hands and feet of the gospel of peace with how we live out that love, snatching others out of the fire. We never know the impact we're making on people's lives with how we live. That's why it's so important that we wake up, that we come to the reality that time is of the essence. It is time. The time is of the essence that we're, we're not just 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 coming to church just to be filled and just to go home and watch a football game but we're coming to be filled we're being equipped to go out and then come on come on i got with me this morning we, we are meant to go out and be that light in this darkness i said it before and i'll say it again satan is not playing games and neither should we Satan is doing everything he can to take people out, to, to, to bring people, keep them in the bottomless pit. But we have the answer in Jesus Christ, in his word, who brings us from the mire, uh, the bottomless pit, bring us out of that mire clay. He sets us on the firm foundation on which we can stand. God is trustworthy. We can trust him. He's undefeated. He's taking care of everything that, that needs to be taken care of. And all he is calling us to do, walk with me. Our second point here, those who entrust their lives to Jesus will not be put to shame. And I want this to, to really resonate with us. Those who entrust their lives to Jesus will not be put to shame. When persecution arises... People may be talking about you. There's, there's people over in other countries suffering through, suffering through a lot. Churches being burned down. People being killed for, for their faith. But one thing I can, I, I, can, I can almost guarantee you, they know that God is their defender. Because they did not quit. They did not give up. 
even in the face of, of, of that trial. And we, I, man, I, I don't want to sound just, you know, negative or anything like that, but we, we got it a lot easier here. We, we, we enjoy the comforts of life that not many other people get to enjoy. This past week, uh, over, over in, in, in Alabama, we went a whole week without water. Woo, boy, I tell you. Mm-mm, no, no, man. That, that, that ain't it. <laughs> that, that, that ain't it. No, no, no. <laughs> man, that, that was rough. I ain't going to lie. That, that, that was rough. And I, I, I have never been more thankful for Come on, never been thankful for water in my life. Now, that's, this is, you know. And I started to complain, and then the Lord checked me. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, there, there's other people, they don't even have fresh water. There, there's other people who, who don't even have a roof over their head. And I was like, you know what, Lord, you're right. You're right, every time. <laughs> ever, ever, anyone ever know the Lord to be wrong? Didn't think so. All right, cool. So, and so I started to complain, and then I began to think, man, I'm really blessed. I'm really, really, I'm, I'm in, I'm humbled to be where I am in life because there's so many people who don't have the luxuries that I'm, I'm afforded to have, that we're afforded to have. But yet, there are people who don't have the luxuries that we have that are pursuing God even more than what some of us are here in the United States, in this country. On this side. Now, why is that? Man, um, we have got to get to the point, and it's, it's cliche, but all we want is Jesus. We've got to get to that point. We've got to get to that point. That, that's, that's, the only, that's the only way that people need to see that Jesus is literally our breath. It, Jesus is literally our heartbeat. Jesus is literally the blood that runs through our veins. That Jesus is all we have. Jesus is all we know. There, we are in a time right now in the world where people, not, people are not even Christians. They are hungry than they've ever been. I don't know if you're paying attention to what's going on, but people are hungrier than they've ever been. What an opportunity and time we have now. Man, hey, let's go, let's go, let's go get the harvest. But let's, let's go to those people. Let's, let's go meet them in grocery stores. Let's not be afraid of how they might view us. Because when God is for you, who can be against you? But man, when, when you know that, whew, when you know that God, <laughs> man, he steps before you, come, man, man, if, if I'm facing Mark Henry, I, I ain't got to be afraid. If, I, if I'm facing the undertaker, I ain't got to be afraid because the Lord, go, the Lord, okay, maybe y'all got that reference, maybe y'all didn't. Okay, sorry, BJ probably did. All right. But it, when we know that God is for us, man, that changes everything. That should change our perspective. That, that, should, that should build that fire, that passion with us every day. God, you go before me, so I will not be afraid. Almost 365 times the Bible tells us, fear not. Fear not. Back to the message. Sorry, I got, got off a, a rabbit trail here. Those who entrust their life to Jesus will not be put to shame. God is our defender. So anything that, that as sons and daughters, anything that he has promised, he is faithful to fulfill it. He is, uh, it says, he who began the work in you is faithful to complete it. He's faithful, meaning it will be done. Our next point, God is searching for a seed of faith with no doubt than rather a, a tree full of faith with all the doubt on the inside. Well, I want to encourage us this morning it, it, it is to, to, to not get so caught up in coming to church, not get so caught up in, in, in uh, going to your Bible studies, do those things. But recognize that your heart needs to be connected. If we're, if we're looking for, a, 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 if we want to be a church on fire, let us be. Let us become the church that are the burning ones for Jesus. 
the ones who are willing to take a step back from the, from the cycles and chaos of the world to say, you know what, Lord, I'm going to take this time to spend with you. I'm going to spend this time with you, and I'm going to start with you. Lord, what do you want today? What do you want to say through me today? Who do you want me to go to today? Start there. That will make, that will make a plethora of difference. Because we're, 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 in, we're in a society now, man, people see through all this fake stuff. I'm sorry, I'm trying to stay on top of it, but this, is, this has been building in me. <laughs> people can see all through this fake stuff. When, man. And it's time out for us to be playing patty cake. And it's time for us to take up our sword, our shield, the helmet of salvation, the feet of the gospel. It's time to, to saddle up. It's time to get going. It's, it's time to roll and be about our Father's business. But mainly with, with the heart laid down. And this is why I'm saying this because Saul was doing, at first was thinking he was doing all this stuff for God. Persecuting Christians, killing Christians, doing all this stuff. He had the zeal but had not been shown the wisdom. But did not sit down to consult God of why is he doing this. He didn't take time to consider what he was doing until an encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus took Saul from a misguided zeal to being one of the pillars of the Christian faith today. Changes his name from Saul to Paul, giving him new life, uh, teaching Paul how he was to be zealous for him. We can, we can think we're doing all the right things, but if our heart is not in it, what are we doing? Proverbs talks extensively about how in our own eyes, I think it was Proverbs 16 we were talking about earlier, that in our own eyes, things seem to be pleasing, seems to be good, but God weighs the heart. The Pharisees never sat down to ask God, why are they doing this? They ran to their own motive. They rejected Jesus Christ because they had conjured up in their own minds what type of king should have come. If you really look at it, they, 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 they had this whole idea, oh, Jesus is going to come and overthrow the Roman government, and we're going to have a hoo ha rah and we're going to be rulers of the world. Wow, big party. No, no. That's not how Jesus came. Jesus came meek, lowly. He came through, uh, this, this, he came essentially overthrowing the Roman government, but in a whole different idea and way that the Pharisees, the Pharisees thought. They thought that the Old Testament was prophesying a king that would come and overthrow the Roman government like always, but God had something greater. The real problem wasn't necessarily the Roman Empire, but it was the state of our hearts, our soul, our inner being that needed a way for deliverance to be set free. So as we move forward into chapter 10, Paul says his desire is for Israel to be saved, to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, prophesied about, who paved the way for us to live. And not only that, he took death to put death to death, took authority from death, hell and the grave, and restored that authority back to, uh, restored that authority back to us that Adam and Eve gave over to Satan in the Garden of Eden. And he's restored that back to us, to those who believe and place their trust in Jesus Christ. This is what Paul is hitting over and over and over again. We can't do this by ourselves. If you're dealing with depression, get in the secret place. Seek the Lord. He is looking. He is close to those who are brokenhearted. He is close to the ones dealing with anxiety. He's close to the ones dealing with suicidal thoughts. Get in his presence. Because Satan demands to sift you like we, but God has prayed for you and continues to pray for you. That your faith may not fail, your faith, your trust may not fail, but you will ever continue to grow into the knowledge of who Jesus is. Continue to grow in that relationship with him. The Pharisees, they had the zeal. They had that relentless, uh, that relentless routine, but they lacked the heart of humility. To, they lacked the heart of brokenness, brokenness of what God is wanting. 
the, 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 that, 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 that humility, the humility that lays down before the Lord. God, what is on your heart? What do you want to communicate to the world? In Psalms 51, David paints a, a picture of what, what God is looking for in, 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 our, in, in, in followers of Jesus Christ. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. If you skip over to uh, uh, verses 16 and 17, for you will not delight in sacrifice or I would give it. You will not be pleased with a burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken contrite heart. Oh God, you will not despise. He is looking for humility. We got a lot of people not trying to throw shade. We got a lot of folks running around claiming to be followers of Christ but hearts full of pride. That, that's dangerous. That's a dang, very dangerous place to be. True followers of Christ walk in humility. They say, Lord, it, 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 it's almost like it, it, they're, they're walking so close with the Lord, they can sense when they're getting altered off track. And then, Lord, no, this is not it. Let, what, Lord, what do you want me to wear? Teach me your ways, O Lord. Let not your word depart from my heart. If David could have given sacrifices all the time and to, to be in right standing with him, he would have done it. But the revelation David receives here is that the Lord looks at the heart. And I know I'm saying heart a lot, heart a lot, but we need to hit this home because this is, this, is, this is crucial for us. David understood that God is always concerned in looking at our why. Why do we come to worship? Why, why, why do we come to church, to celebration church? Why do we uh, help those who ask with no limitations? Where, where is our heart? What, why are we passionate about what God is passionate about? I ask this because God is soon to return, and he said to the woman, those who worship God shall worship him in spirit and in truth. We can check off things, but if our hearts have not been refined by God's love, we're missing the point. So the people of Israel, uh, being ignorant of God's intention, sought to, uh, sought to establish their own way. They, they, they walked in, in, in their own way what they thought was righteous. And in verse, verse 4 here, chapter 10, verse 4, Christ is the goal. Christ did, did what we ourselves could not do. The law has been fulfilled through Christ Jesus. And Paul ends in verse 4, those who seek righteousness, those who seek to behold, those who who are wanting to be like Christ, to live as Christ has called us to be, we need to believe and entrust our lives to Christ. Hosea takes, uh, as a prophetic gesture, he takes a wife that, that, that's constantly selling, uh, giving herself to other nations, but if you look at it, God continues to show himself as a husband to her, meaning Israel. God remained faithful to his bride, even when his bride sold herself to other nations. This is the story that, that's, that's been painted over time. God calls out to Israel, and Israel lends her ear and her heart to other voices, but God still pursues her today. And through Jesus Christ, he, he paved the way for us, not necessarily an uh, uh, Israelite, and us, not a, a, a Jew. Through Jesus Christ, us Gentiles, if you're not Jew, then what are we? Gentiles. All right. Come on, somebody. All right. The Lord paved the way for all, for, for, for us to, to be grafted in as either Pastor Matt or Pastor BJ will touch on in chapter 11. We were grafted into the family of Christ. And we're called today, even now, to, to seek God's heart and understand his ways. Our next point, when we lose sense of why God wants us, uh, why God wants us to do something, we lose the heartbeat of the Father. As the, as the band comes, comes up, knowing how God feels helps us to know what is right and what is wrong. The question is, who is God? And what does God say and what he wants? What God wants, what he wants is good. 
And what he doesn't want, that, that is what is evil. The law is God's stance against sin, against the world. All to say that we shouldn't want sin in our lives. We should have hearts fully abandoned to him. If we love God, then we care about his heart and how he feels about things. Our next point here, as we begin to close, God is not obligated to fill our expectations, but he will be faithful to his promises. God is not obligated to fulfill our expectations, but he will be faithful to his promises. When we confess that Jesus is Lord, as we'll, we'll tackle here in, in, an, in another, another message here. When we confess Jesus is Lord, that means Caesar is not. That means it does not matter who's in all, but that is not our Lord. That person is not Jesus Christ is our Lord. Now, that's, that's hard to hear for a lot of us, especially for us in the South. But we have got to wake up and get, get to this place where we want Jesus above everything else. Because in the end game, nothing else will matter except what Christ has done. What, what, we, what, what he set for us. That's all that's going to stand. Everything else is going to burn away. Our cars, our houses, all that. You can forget about it. It's going to burn away. But dust. But what we have done for Christ, what Christ has done, that it's just not even I owe, and I owe, I, I, I owe, Lord of mercy, I owe, <laughs> not even I owe will, will, will be removed before he fulfills his promises, before he, he forever reigns on the throne. And we've got to come to that realization. That's not some horrid thing to, to, to dwell on, to, to understand, to know if we are followers of Jesus. That's the key. Our allegiance as followers of Jesus is to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. It's not to this world. Holiness or righteousness, and I believe this is our last point right here. It's when Jesus' life and our life become the same. Any, any standard of moralism that we may have that doesn't want to see our neighbor come to know Jesus Christ. It's, it's not worth it. We're called to love God with everything that we have. And then we've got to do the other part. That's what's missing in the world. We as a people, we, we can get so caught up and, and just spending time with the Lord. Spend time with the Lord. Please do that. But you got to understand, you can't stay in that, 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 that closet forever. You got to walk outside. It's what the Pharisees missed. The Pharisees thought it was all about them. When God really designed the plan, the promise of Abraham to bring, to, to pave the way for all to come into his kingdom. For all, that, for all to know his heart, to, for all to, 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 to be snatched out of the fire. We've got to get out of this selfishness. And just so y'all know, this, this, this hit me before <laughs> it was presented to y'all. When Jesus comes from, from, from that place, he looks at that, that large crowd and he was moved with compassion. We're more Christ-like when we're concerned about our neighbor's state of being. Than, when we, than we are our own. Christ says to consider others above. Paul says to consider others above our, our own wants. Not neglecting, not neglecting, hear me out. But consider your brother and sister. See, me and BJ, Pastor BJ, we're brothers. We, we, we are brothers in Christ. Me and, well, I don't know if Pastor Matt considers, we'll, we'll get there. We're getting there, maybe. Maybe. We'll get there. <laughs> But we, if we're in Christ, we're all one family. 
and we've got to, to put these little, we've got to put these preferences aside and join hand in hand with God and say, Lord, we're going to follow you above everything else. That's how the world will see that light in the midst of this darkness. We've got to get on one accord, same page. Amen? And Betsy, don't fall asleep on me. I'm, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm done now. So, Father, I pray, Lord, that, Lord, that, Lord, our, your word will rest on our hearts. That, Lord, we would weigh our hearts daily, Lord. Not in this um, anxiety, anxiety fashion or, or paranoia fashion, but, Lord, because we want our hearts to long for you and what you want. Father, help us, Lord, to, to get to a place where, Lord, we, we, we long to see our brothers and sisters saved. That, that we long for those uh, you know, brothers and sisters that we know dealing with depression, dealing with anxiety, dealing with all these things, addictions, being set free and delivered and brought into who you are, Lord. Father, help us to not be so conceited. Help us to not be so just, just marking off a checklist. But Lord, we miss the whole point of your heart, your intentions. Father, you're calling out to Israel, Lord, and you're calling out to us still today. So Lord, if there's one maybe watching online, if there's one here, Lord, who does not truly know you as Lord and Savior. Father, I pray, Lord, you will arrest their hearts. Lord, there's a song that if, if more of you means less of me, Lord, take everything. So, Father, if whatever it takes, Lord, I pray, Lord, that we would be willing to go to that place where our heartbeat matches yours. In Jesus' name we pray.